Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 13.4 definite integrals. 13.4 represents chapter 13, section 4 of the Pearson A level Maths, Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. The integral from a to b kx to the power n dx, where a, b, k, and n are constants, is called the definite integral. a is the lower limit, b is the upper limit. So in general, an integral with limits is called a definite integral. Ladies and gents, the integral from a to b kx to the power n dx is equal to kx to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, taking limits a to b, and is not equal to negative 1. For definite integrals, do not include c, the constant of integration. Use this as a rule of thumb. If you were to include the constant of integration c and you substitute your limits in, the c's will cancel. So just avoid including the constant of integration c for definite integrals. Keyword, calculus. Now, calculus is an area of mass which includes differentiation and integration. These are the key facts of 13.4 definite integrals. I'll be implementing these key facts within two exam style questions. Let's have a look at exam style question one. Use calculus to find the value of the integral from 1 to 9 of 2x minus 3 square root x dx. The key word is calculus. Calculus involves differentiation and integration. The specific technique that we're going to use for this question is integration. Let's proceed with the solution. So we are trying to calculate the value of the integral from 1 to 9 of 2x. The second term you can rewrite it as minus 3 x to the power of half dx. Remember, using laws of indices, we know that square root x is the same as x to the power of half. Okay, so now I'm going to apply term by term integration. Let's start off with the first term. So equal, open square bracket, 2x to the power 1 plus 1, divide by 1 plus 1. Now I'm going to integrate the second term. So I've got minus 3x to the power a half plus 1, divide by a half plus 1. Close square bracket, taking limits from 1 to 9. We need to simplify the coefficients of each term. Let's start off with the first term. So we've got 2 divided by 1 plus 1. That would just be 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So I can write x to the power 1 plus 1, which is 2. Now I'm going to simplify the coefficient of the second term. I've got minus 3 divided by a half plus 1. Okay, so that would be minus 3 divided by 3 over 2, which is just 2. x to the power a half plus 1, which is 3 over 2. Taking limits 1 to 9. Okay, we're going to start by substituting the upper limit. You must always first substitute the upper limit. So we've got square bracket, replace the x's with 9. So that will be 9 squared minus 2 lots of 9 to the power 3 over 2. Close square bracket, minus, substitute the lower limit. Replace the x's with 1. So we've got 1 squared minus 2 lots of 1 to the power 3 over 2. Close square bracket. Okay, so we can put both of these into our calculator. So if I put this into my calculator, I get 27 minus, if I put this into my calculator, I get precisely minus 1. So 27 minus minus 1 is 27 plus 1. This gives me 28. So the value of this integral is 28. This completes exam style question 1. Moving on to exam style question 2. Given that a is a constant and the integral from 1 to 4 of 6 square root x minus a dx is equal to a squared, show that there are two possible values for a and find these values. Let's proceed with the solution. Let's start off by looking at the left hand side. So we've got the integral from 1 to 4 of the first term you can rewrite it as 6x to the power of half, then you've got minus a dx. So now I'm going to apply term by term integration. Let's start off with the first term. So equal, open square bracket, 6x to the power of half plus 1, divide by a half plus 1. Minus, a is a constant, so this integrates to ax. Close square bracket, taking limits from 1 to 4. Right, for the first term, we can simplify the coefficient. So we do 6, divide by a half plus 1. This gives me 6 divided by 3 over 2, which is 4. x to the power 3 over 2 minus ax, taking limits from 1 to 4. 
So now we're going to substitute the upper limit. We're going to replace the x's with 4. So equal, open square bracket, 4 lots of 4 to the power 3 over 2, minus a lots of 4, close square bracket. Take away, substitute the lower limit, replace the x's with 1. So we've got open square bracket, 4 lots of 1 to the power 3 over 2, minus a lots of 1, close square bracket. We're going to simplify each square bracket. Let's start off with the first one. So the first term becomes 32 minus, second term is 4a minus, okay, so over here we've got 4 minus a. Right, so this minus will affect everything inside the bracket. So let's expand the bracket. We can get rid of this bracket over here. We can write 32 minus 4a. Expand this bracket, we get minus 4 plus a. Okay, simplify this. Ladies and gents, we get 28 minus 3a. Okay, so that there is precisely the left-hand side. This must equal the right-hand side, which is a squared. So we can take our solution a step further. We've got 28 minus 3a is equal a squared. We have generated a quadratic equation. Take everything to the right-hand side. This gives us 0 is equal a squared plus 3a minus 28. We can factorize the quadratic. So we've got a here and we've got a here. Then we've got plus 7 minus 4. 7 times minus 4 is minus 28. 7 minus 4 is precisely 3. So that is our factorization. We can set each bracket equal to 0. Okay, this leads on to a equal minus 7, a equal 4. That there proves the fact that there are two possible values for a, and each of these values are minus 7 and 4. This completes exam style question 2 in this teaching video 13.4 definite integrals. If you found the teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.